To this day, deathcore is still considered one of the most hated genres of metal. But why? In this video, we'll find out. But first, what is it? Briefly, deathcore is a fusion of death metal with metalcore and hardcore punk. Taking death metal, slamming. Guttural's. And pick squeals. With hardcore punks, shouty vocals, and aggressiveness. Still, it's rather a loose term since bands could either be more melodic, slamming, technical. Even symphonic. AKA die first. But before MySpace and Emo Kids, who started it? Going back to the 80s, crossover fresh bands were fusing fresh metal with punk like DLI, suicidal tendencies, and cryptic slaughter. The 90s came in the metallic hardcore, aka metalcore, scene where bands started embracing metal into hardcore like Earth Crisis, Converge, Integrity, etc., gaining underground popularity. Meanwhile, the Murder Seas demo would be considered the real father of Death Core, a perfect blend of Death Metal's heaviness and Hardcore's energy. A year later, Crossface Ruin refused Tech Death, Melkor Passages, and Hardcore's groups. Along with their New York drumming style that would become the norm for many New York Death Metal bands. Another band was damaged, releasing The Art of Destroying Life and Do Not Split a year later. You might know Massodon from his Moby Dick album, but they used to be Lethargy. Lost in this existence was another landmark for his punky drummings and vocals with metalcore riffs. Since it was the transformation of including tech death. To be fair, it reminds me of death so much. Despite the 1996 album being a huge pioneer in mathcore and metalcore, it's still important in proto deathcore. Along with End of One. Until the mid to late 90s, many would consider this era as the established and rise of deathcore. Most notably with upheavals, downfall of the ascendancy of man, with its thick slack chugging, pitch harmonics, and influences from brutal death metal. Another band was Day of Suffering, not only taking their name from a Morbid Angel song, but also their influences, especially on guitar riffs. Along with Jane with a more emo approach. Spread the Disease album to help closing the gap between 8000 style deathcore and US bands like Embodiment and the Spice Icon. Speaking of Embodiment, Embrace the Internal would be very well known in its history, often considered as the first deathcore album. Along with others like Deformity, Reprisal, Through Blood We're Born, etc. 
After going back to old school deathcore, make sure to share, like, and subscribe. It's a huge support and motivation for me to continue these types of videos. Now back to deathcore. Into the MySpace golden era of deathcore. In early 2000s, deathcore started taking huge influences in melodic death metal and metalcore, but started drifting away from its traditional metalcore roots, which birthed a new label called At The Gates Core or In Flames Core due to many bands like All Shall Perish, Blood runs back and early bring me the horizon. Taking inspiration from the infamous slaughter of the soul riff. Eric Jaron from the Spice Icon said, We were into suffocation, defilement, and dying fetus. But we were also into Hatebreed and Madball. We were influenced by Obituary and Subterra. A song like Dead in Bryonic Cells has the most epic breakdowns ever. So we wanted to combine the blast beats with slam riffs and breakdowns. At the same time, bands started to diversify themselves. For example, there's tech deathcore bands like the Red Chord, the Spice Icon, Glass Casket, Eon Dissonance. As if Chuck Schrodinger joined a deathcore band, melodic deathcore bands include Prayer for Cleansing, Heaven Shall Burn, Seventy Days After Death, Go Embrace. Other bands like Dead to Fall Animosity Black Acadia Morning Far from Forgiven Sarah. In mid-2000s, the drama got into MySpace and newer bands, hate to say it, but shred off 80% of their hardcore roots. Only focusing on the brutal image, aka overdoing breakdowns, floss beats, guttural, and of course, pig spews. Which attracted a lot of emo and scene kids, referring them as brutal core, with two O's as zeros, cause you know, 2000s, right D. Major bands include Job for a Cowboy. That water drowning. <laughs> and Chelsea Grin. <laughs> Despite this, the drama wasn't ready for such extreme music. Scott Lewis from Carnifex, another important band, <laughs> remembers that time fondly and said, When we're open for Melkor bands, I'll be doing gutter rolls and we'll be blasting for 3 minutes and we'll get booze and middle fingers from the fans. Deathcore was a joke. Some people were ready, but a lot weren't. CJ McMahon from CR is Murder and Porn Band 2 <laughs> came from a metalcore and hardcore background and wanted to play something more extreme, but they were the only bands that are playing that kind of music in Australia. I ended up getting in fights with hardcore gangs who have younger fans and the hardcore guys would hate Marsh D's kids, so I'd jump off the stage and fight, finishing shows with a bruised lip or nose. I made clear that I would flog any of them if they wanted to cause trouble, but thanks to MySpace, Bring Me The Horizon <laughs> and Suicide Silence have a platform and gained many teams interest, at one point being one of the most streamed acts on the website, along with others like Whitechapel <laughs> and Emmer. The 
Jaw quickly became a trend on the music industry. Big record labels and more people want to grab on quick money and fame, causing the scene to flood with manufactured bands and albums. Also, the emo kids birthed a new subgenre called electronic core, with bands that we butter the bread with butter. <laughs> Sana Skyline etc. If you want to know more about electronic core, then check out this video, link in the description. Yet many influential bands would deny the label. Vincent Bennett from the Acacia Strain and Point Band. <laughs> Sad, deathcore is the new new metal. You see the same kids, same ethics, it sucks. If anyone calls us deathcore, then I might do something very bad to them. Also, they're very very old beef with Emir, if you remember. Just the long short from Through Eyes of the Dead and Point Band 2. Also sad, I really hate that term. I think there's so much more to our music than just a mixture of death metal and hardcore. It will die out just like any other musical trend. All these record labels are picking up on it and it's only a matter of time until they move onward to the next thing. Despite this, there's plenty of bands that are on the heavier side of things like Winds of Plague, Demolisher, Jerome, etc. and other technical bands like After the Burial <laughs> Within the Ruin <laughs> and Beneath the Massacre <laughs> As time passes, emo and scene kids were gone, and some male has finally started appreciating deathcore. In 2010, Suicide Silence The Black Crown reached number 28 on Billboard's Top 200, but the reviews are okay-ish. And White Chapel's Our Endless War reached number 10 on Billboard and got positive reviews. Also, the hate towards new metal has died down, allowing bands to incorporate their elements into deathcore, creating new deathcore. With bands like Here Comes the Crank, <laughs> Alpha Wolf, <laughs> Love to Suffer, <laughs> Hunter Dinosaur. <laughs> Sarah. Scott Lewis said, We're not one of those bands trying to escape the banner of deathcore. And Jake Harmon from Chelsea Grin also said, Honestly, we have never given a damn. Now we're back to modern days where deathcore is still hated by male heads, but at last, they're accepted in the community. We got down tempo deathcore like Black Tongue, <laughs> Overthrower, <laughs> Traders. Fight. That's similar to Acacia String. Ingested, one of my favorite bands that's constantly changing their sounds with deathcore. And other bands like Waking the Cafater. Slaughter to Prefail. Shadow of Intent <laughs> and Enterprise Earth <laughs> But to me, Lana Show was the band that brought Deathcore to the alternative audience and TikTok <laughs> Giving Deathcore a shine on the spotlight and thrust getting major hate <laughs> And that's Death Coast beginning to modern days. Here's what some of you have said about the genre on Instagram. Ryan Jerome said it's cause it's overproduced in my opinion, which is true. Reagan Yu said it's hated cause it sucks. Depends on which era we're talking about in my opinion. Lee or Last Days of Humanity, a very funny meme page about extreme metal, drop a follow, said I feel like the earlier stuff was more heavy and brutal, giving huge inspiration to Slam, but as the years went, it got a lot more basic and honestly really tame. Even the breakdowns being not too heavy, just dumb drop. But 
old school deathcore breakdowns were genuinely just like Slam but renamed. I have never read something that truthful before. Which also explains why sometimes people would confuse this deathcore with slamming death metal. After hours of researching and listening, I couldn't say much as a slam out enjoyer. I used to listen to Suicide Silence thinking that's the most brutal thing on earth before getting bored of its song structures. At some point you gotta blame major record labels for limiting some band's creativity in order to fit in the scene. Overall, if you're an extreme metalhead, you might enjoy old school deathcore. And there's nothing wrong if you enjoy 2000s or modern day deathcore. You are still welcomed in the community. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and your most or least favorite bands in the comments. Thank you so much for staying to the end. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe as a support for me to continue these deep dives into different music genres. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!